Okay, the Colorado team arrived in Panama. The team did not speak Spanish or Kuna, and the Kuna people did not speak English, but they quickly learned to communicate in creative ways. They laughed, worked hard, traveled by boat, hiked difficult paths, and worshiped together. This brought them closer to each other and to God. Near the end of their trip, John, the Colorado team leader, and Pastor Amable were talking. Thank you for being a blessing to the Kuna people, Pastor Amable said. How can we pray for you? What is the biggest need? asked John. A little shy with his answer, Pastor Amable said, a boat and a motor. There are so many people we have difficulty reaching because they live on islands. What would that cost? inquired John. $7,000. More money than we have, answered Pastor Amable. We will be praying. That is a very big need, stated John. How was God going to answer that prayer? So let's look at our picture again. Them talking. That's the cost of the boat so they could get to people on islands and praying. Let's see what happens next. Chapter 3, Dinner with the Matthews. Chris, time to wake up, said his father, Mr. Matthews, from the open door. He slowly opened one eye, then the other, as the sun shined through the window. One glance told him it was too early and too bright. He would prefer to go back to sleep. Chris? Chris? Was he dreaming? He must be on a boat, for he was rocking back and forth as the waves rose and fell. Suddenly, his eyes shot open. Rosie, his younger sister, was standing over him, shaking his shoulders back and forth. I don't want to be late again, she exclaimed. Last week, you took so long to wake up that I missed part of class. At that, she turned abruptly, leaving Chris to get ready. The Matthews family were driving to Denver for dinner with friends who had just returned from Panama. Are there any mountains in Panama, like our Rocky Mountains, Rosie asked. Yes, answered Chris before his parents could reply. How could you know, she asked. Chris turned to look at his sister. I was curious, he said. If we're going to talk about Panama tonight, I wanted to know something about it before we got there. Mr. and Mrs. Matthews smiled as they listened to their conversation. They were looking forward to their children hearing how God is at work in other parts of the world. The evening was exciting as Mr. Dave and Miss Ellie's home. Miss Ellie made a typical Panama meal, rice, beans, and chicken with plantain bananas for dessert. Here they are having dinner. You must know a lot of Spanish to go to Panama, Rosie said. Not at all, said Miss Ellie. We had to make motions, trying to explain what we wanted to say, either that or use translators, and even that had its problems. There were three languages, she continued, English, Spanish, and Kuna. It was a lot for the translators. God is going to do great things in Kuna. Mr. Dave shared stories of the Pan people of Panama, their travels on rough paths, and the long boat rides to get to the villages, even meeting real chiefs. Tell them about their needs, said Miss Ellie. The Matthews family listened closely. Mr. Dave said, we asked what their greatest need was. It is a difficult one. Why, asked Rosie, is it something bad? Not bad, Miss Ellie replied, just, well, big. He said there were people who lived on islands that were hard to reach. Well, that's easy, Chris exclaimed, just buy a boat, problem solved. Mr. Dave smiled, that's just it. It costs $7,000. He knows it's huge, continued Mr. Dave, but that's their biggest need right now. Chapter four, a big idea. Pastor Lauren was gathering supplies. Let's see, where's my flashlight, she muttered to herself. Found it, located it near the kitchen. She then pulled out shiny aluminum foil and a large wooden bowl, adding them to her bag. Anything I'm missing, she thought to herself. Sunday mornings were important, for Pastor Lauren used everything she could to make scripture come alive to the children, opening up opportunities for them to learn about God, what his son Jesus did for us, and how his love changed everything. With her props and tools for this week's lesson, she made her way to church. 
passed through Lauren's brown eyes sparkled as she greeted the children. She tried to greet each child as they entered the hallway, thrilled God asked her to minister to children. On this particular Sunday during the kids' worship time, Pastor Lauren mentioned that Vacation Bible School would be at the beginning of June. June was still three months away, but Pastor Lauren knew how fast time went. Rosie raised her hand. Where is our offering going to this year, Pastor Lauren? I'll have to find out, she answered. I have an idea, continued Rosie. Do you guys know what that idea might be? She then shared the story she and Chris had heard the night before at Mr. Dave and Miss Ellie's home. Pastor Lauren smiled. Thank you, Rosie, for that suggestion. Chris quickly spoke up. Hey, that's a great idea. It's only $7,000. We could raise that easily. Pastor Lauren's brown eyes grew wide. $7,000? That's impossible. Now, we just did an offering at church, too, called the Alabaster Offering. The Alabaster Offering goes to raising money to build churches and buildings around the world. Places like Panama and even places here in the United States get that money so that there can be buildings for people to hold worship in. All right. Chris, Pastor Lauren Cast, it's a great idea, but that's a lot of money. But you just taught us about letting our light shine to the world, Chris replied. If we can help the pastors in Panama buy a boat, more people will learn about God. But Chris, began Pastor Lauren, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Rosie read the scripture on the whiteboard. Isn't that what we would be doing? The week following, Pastor Lauren continued to think about the people of Panama, the needs of the pastors, and the challenge from the Matthews children. That's ridiculous, she thought. There's no way we could raise that kind of money. But the need for a boat began to burn deep within her. Finally, with a sense of urgency, she called the Colorado District Church of the Nazarene office. She had to speak to the children's ministry director. Maybe she would have an idea of how to raise money for the boat. We have a district too. Our district is set in Minnesota. Chapter five, expect a miracle. Word spread about the Panama Boat Project. The District of Colorado would have fundraisers and BBS offerings for the purchase of motor and boat. Are you serious, Chris squealed? I'm serious, Pastor Lauren laughed. It's because you and Rosie shared about the need, said Pastor Lauren. Rosie covered her mouth with her hands and giggled. She couldn't believe it. Chris sat a little taller, feeling confident. We can do it. $7,000 isn't too much. Pastor Lauren reminded him, it actually is a lot of money, she said. I don't know if the children, gotta get my page, of Colorado can raise the entire amount, but it will be more than our church alone can do. Chris didn't hesitate, but what if we do raise it all? Would that be a miracle? Yes, Chris, Pastor Lauren said after a moment, I believe that would indeed be a miracle. So let's expect a miracle, Rosie quietly said. Pastor Lauren turned to where Rosie was sitting. She thought of the childlike faith Jesus wants for all Christians. She was challenged by the faith of the children. Yes, Pastor Lauren replied with tears in her eyes. Let's expect a miracle. Vacation Bible School was about to begin. Adults were all over the church, were getting their rooms ready. Pastor Lauren was putting the final touches in the sanctuary. God, she prayed, the children believe you can do a miracle by raising all that is needed for this boat and motor. Pastor Lauren paused in her prayer and looked at the offering buckets. Expect a miracle. Expect a miracle. Okay, God, she finally resolved. I expect a miracle. Children were jumping and singing the BBS songs. The sanctuary was decorated, and both the kids and grown-ups were laughing and having fun. After the music, Pastor Lauren described the offering contest between the boys and the girls. Throughout the week, she encouraged kids to do chores, turn in cans, and find other ways to earn money for the offering. What do you think will win today? Pastor Lauren called. The girls, she asked. The girls jumped, waving their hands. The boys? The room seemed to shake as they shouted they would win that day. Pastor Lauren showed a picture of a motorboat. There are pastors who share the good news of Jesus to everyone they can, she said, but they have difficulty visiting some because the only way they can be reached is by boat. 
Now, our missions team didn't do that, but there are places in the world that are only allowed or not necessarily allowed, but only able to be reached by things like boats and stuff. So you have to get creative to share the gospel. The boys and girls quieted it down as pictures of Panama, the people in the islands swept across the screen. By raising money for a boat and motor, she continued, the Kuna people will hear about God, learn of his love for them, and prayerfully become a Christ follower. This contest is fun, and we will have fun. Smiling, she finished, but this is not about who wins, but whether all Kuna people will be introduced to Christ. The children stood, clapping and cheering. Chris and Rosie stood as well, confident that something special was happening. Here's a picture of them at VBS. She's telling them about it. And look at them. The girls will win. The boys will win. I used to do that growing up, too. We would save our offering and then see who won, and the offering would go to missions. Okay, one more chapter. Chapter six, God uses children. Pastor Amable was busy working. He sat in front of his computer, reading the many emails he had received on a daily basis. What are you doing, Amable? His wife asked. She entered his office. Looking up, he said with a sigh, there are so many people who still don't know Christ. God knows and will provide, she replied. Yes, he responded, thankful that she loves God as he does. An email brought a smile to his face. It was from John, the Colorado team leader who had begun there in March. Greetings in the name of our Lord, it began. We have continued to pray for you since arriving back home. While reading the email, Pastor Amable stopped, read the same line again, and with his eyes growing wide. Doris, he called, come quickly! His wife immediately returned, wondering what the excitement was. God's done it, said Pastor Amable. Done what? she asked. This is an email from the Colorado team leader, he answered with his face glowing. She bent down and began to read. She gasped, her hands over her heart, understanding her husband's joy. Funding for the purchase of the boat and motor has been raised by children of the Church of the Nazarene in Colorado, the email read. God did have a way, Pastor Mobley exclaimed. He is so faithful. And look, she added, at the difference the children made. Praise be to God. Sunday, March 5th, 2016, was a beautiful sunny day. Everyone arrived at the shore dressed for the celebration. The boat and motor had been purchased, and today was the dedication. The sun was hot, and many used umbrellas for shade. The boat had been given two names, Pastor Blas and Reverend Anadeus, were written on each side. These two pastors were the first two Nazarenes who administered to the small Wagandi village, taking with them the good news of Jesus Christ. Reverend Anadeus Rodriguez and her family, and the wife and daughters of Pastor Blas Segura, were present, sitting in the boat among other leaders and pastors as it made its way across the water. I'm still amazed at the way God provided, Amable said as they walked slowly back home after the wonderful celebration. Smiling, Doris added, and look at who he used. Children. Whoever thinks children can't be used to share the good news needs to have a talk with you, Amable. They stepped through the door of their home, excited for the days to come. They had learned to expect a miracle. And one final picture to show you. See, they've got their boat. And see the pastor's names on it and the pastors that had started sharing that and the kids remember the kids names and the group of people that came for the dedication see when we get something special like this and the lord blesses us with these things because people do and even in general it's important to dedicate things we do that by honoring god with the gifts that he's been given us and so when we say lord we thank you for this boat but we dedicate this boat to you um, he pours out his blessings over that. And because of this, guess how many more people get to learn about Jesus because of that? What a great book, huh? It's pretty cool. Um, there's going to be some activities for you guys to do. And here are some follow-up questions that were at the end of the book that you guys can talk about with your families, okay? Question number one, what does it mean to obey God? This is a good question. Question number two, Name some of the people in the story who obeyed God. Question number three. What children did God use to provide the boat for the Kuna people in Panama? Question number four. 
Have you ever thought about how God could use you to make a difference? Now, sometimes we don't have to go overseas to be able to do something. Right now, there's a lot of things happening in our community and in town. You and your family could do something special for people, your neighbors, your friends, your family. Number five, think about something or someone you have heard of that God could help. Kind of like churches on the mission field, clean water, or medicine in poor countries. Those are just a few examples. Six, what are some ways you could make a difference and be used by God to meet those needs? This is a really cool book, guys, and we've got some more that we can share. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm going to go ahead and end in prayer. Um, but what's exciting about this is these stories, um, like at the beginning that I told you, these stories are stories that missionaries have shared and so that we can learn about the experiences and what God has done for us and what has, God has done for other people. Because if our mission is to go forth and make disciples of all people, that includes us. That includes you and your families. And so I hope you enjoy the activities. I hope you enjoyed reading with us. And thank you for your time. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for your word and your presence, Lord. I thank you for missionaries and for people who choose to take trips to share your good news. I thank you for miracles like these, for obedience of hearts that are willing to share um, their resources and their finances so that others may have what they need. We know that there's a lot of things going on in the world right now, but what we do know and what we always have hope in is you. You provide, you have your hand in everything, and just like this story, we know that you will take care of everything. We love you and we thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next time, guys. Bye!